Hey guys, welcome back to another Tom Clancy's The Division 2 video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the fastest way to level up your shade watch. So if you have a low watch level and need to level it up fast, then you should find this video helpful. This video will be covering one of the fastest ways to farm for XP in the game currently. Also, I'll be revealing some tips and tricks that you can do to get the most out of this. And if you'd like to see the build that I'm using to farm with in this video, then stick around because I will be revealing it later. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay guys, so what we're gonna be doing is farming public executions and resource convoys in this area right here. So the West Potomac Park area near the middle of the map, this area is where the magic happens. And there are other good areas too, like this area right here, but I find this area doesn't spawn public executions as often, but sometimes I get lucky and a couple would spawn here on repeat. So this area right here just has the best respawn rate in my opinion, and there are so many other activities activities close by so you don't have to waste time traveling very far to the next activity. But for those of you who are familiar with this XP farming method, let me know if there are any other great spots that I'm unaware of I'd like to know. But anyway, the reason we want to target public executions is because public executions will give the most amount of XP. So check this out, with the world difficulty on challenging and no directives on, you get 187,000 XP for clearing each public execution. Which isn't a whole lot of XP, but wait till you see how much it goes up to with the changes I'm about to show you. 403,000. That's a big difference, right? And it takes 700,000 XP to level up each time, so that's more than half of that you're getting every, what, like two minutes? Because it only takes about a minute and a half to two minutes to clear these public executions, even on Heroic. So make sure to have the difficulty set to Heroic and add at least three directives. The directives I'm using are the Fog of War, Fragile Armor, and Rager's directives. Also, keep in mind that the directives cycle, so depending on when you're watching this video, video, you may have a different set of directives to choose from. So what I like to do is fast travel to the Tidal Basin mission since it's the closest fast travel point to the public executions. Then once I clear all the public executions in the area, I go in the open world map, hit global settings, and reset control points. Sometimes you may need to reset a few times to get another public execution to spawn. But if none are spawning for you here, then check the other area. A good spot would be a fast travel point with at least one public execution nearby, so I'm sure there are other good spots on the map. One cool thing I thought I should mention that I'm sure many of you may not know is that you can avoid the loading screen you get from resetting control points or changing the global settings by fast traveling to a safe house. For some reason, when you're in a safe house, you get no loading screen. So before you reset the control points, you should fast travel to the nearest safe house. This will just save you a bit of time. Another fast way to level up your watch is by eliminating enemy resource convoys throughout the map. So you see these red crates, these red container looking crates throughout the map? These are enemy resource convoys. Clearing them won't give you as much as public executions, however, but they can be done in a heartbeat. So what I like to do is fast travel to the nearest location to one of these convoys, and once you eliminate all the waves of NPCs, you can collect the material from the crates on the ground and get XP, then open your map, rinse, and repeat. These convoys can be done a lot quicker than public executions. Another great way to level up your Shade Watch fast is by doing level 4 control points with 3 directives on, you get over 600,000 XP for clearing one control point, which is damn near a level up. And farming control points is actually a great way to get a lot of popular weapon mods and gear blueprints. So if you're underwatch level 1000, then it may be a good idea to farm control points because more than likely you will still be needing your basic blueprints and you'll be killing two birds with one stone in a sense. But I recommend you do this control point farming with a one-shot rifle build because this build will speed things up very quickly. No matter what difficulty this is on, you can one-shot any NPC, including the boss. So get yourself a nice one-shot rifle or marksman rifle build. And if you would like to see a breakdown of this one-shot rifle build, check out this build video here, and I'll leave a link in the description as well. So there are a couple of builds that I'm going to be showing you that are great for doing this public execution farm. These builds are also great for solo gameplay. So this first build is a skill damage build, and what's cool is that your skills do so much damage that you won't really be needing to fire your weapon. 
and this is great because it opens up the opportunity to add more directives. So I can add Pistolero or Ammo Hoarders, for example. And if I add a fourth directive, I'll be getting over 460,000 XP every time I clear a public execution. And this build is extremely powerful, so you should have no trouble clearing these activities quickly. The Waveform Holster really gives the Assault Turret and Striker Drone a nice damage increase. Just look at how fast these heroic NPCs are getting melted. It's a super fun build to use if you'd like to run solo or in a group, so I'll be showing you guys a quick breakdown, then I'll show you guys another DPS build but with weapon damage. So this is the build. Three-piece Empress International, two-piece Hanayu, and the Waveform Holster. Glass Cannon for the chest piece talent, and for the backpack, perfect combined arms for a nice 30% increased skill damage. For the primary weapon, I'm using the named test subject Assault Rifle for the talent perfectly in sync. I find this talent favorable because in sync will be giving me a 20% skill damage increase for hitting an enemy, which stacks well with the perfect combined arms talent. If you don't have the test subject Assault Rifle, then just use any weapon with the talent in sync. For the secondary weapon, the Scorpio is great because it will help with crowd controlling the NPCs. For the gear mods, max 12% skill haste on the mask, vest, and backpack. And ideally, you want to have skill haste and skill damage rolled for your attributes. Having the technician specialization with this build will give you a nice 10% skill damage increase as well as an additional skill tier so you can always roll one of these skill tier attributes off and add armor or weapon damage. For the sidearm, I'm using the TDI card custom pistol with the talent spike. This name pistol comes with an additional skill tier and the talent spike will give a nice 25% skill damage increase for 15 seconds from landing a headshot. So using this pistol is another good opportunity to replace another skill skill tier attribute with more armor or weapon damage if you choose to do so. However, just keep in mind that you will need to have your pistol equipped to receive that extra skill tier. So if you switch to another weapon, you lose that skill tier. Okay guys, so before we wrap up here, I wanted to show you guys another really good solo PvE build for farming these public executions and resource convoys very quickly. So this is a Hunter's Fury SMG DPS build that has a ton of raw weapon damage, and it will work great with almost any SMG in the game. I'm using the Ouroboros because of the insanely high RPM, but any of the vectors or even the Lady Death should work fine. So a basic four piece Hunter's Fury build setup. One piece Sokolov vest with the obliterate talent rolled with max critical hit damage and chance and a maxed out critical hit chance mod. And a memento exotic backpack that helps with damage and survivability. I won't go too in depth on this build just so the video isn't too long, but if you guys would like to see a separate video on this build, let me know in the comment section. This is Prajna. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you made it to the end, you have the attention span of a god. Don't forget to slash the like button. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and see you in the next video. Peace out.